Alright guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about a Python function that everything's going to come together in the next video and you'll see why. And maybe you don't care about that, maybe you just want to know about the isInstance function in Python so you're watching this video. Whatever the case may be, uh, thanks for coming along and feel free to subscribe that way you don't miss any future videos that you might find helpful. And on this channel we just learn to code as I learn different things. Uh, on my own or at work, I like to come on here and share them with you in a way that I hope it makes sense. And yeah, we just try to learn the code together. It's all about learning and continuous learning. So if that sounds cool, feel free to subscribe. That way, like I said, you don't miss anything potentially important. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all the plug I'm going to give. Got some green tea here. That's what I'm drinking tonight. At the beginning of every video, I try to mention what I'm drinking because I don't know why. <laughs> I guess it's just a habit. This is going to be a pretty quick video. We're just going to talk about the isInstance function in Python, how you can use it, what does it do, why is it important. Okay, so the isInstance function, how can it be used? First of all, it's a function that takes two parameters. So let's say x, variable x is going to be equal to isInstance. The first parameter is some kind of data. In our case, I'm going to pass in an integer, 21. Second parameter is a type, and we'll look at the different types you can use here in a second, but in our case, I'm just going to put type int right here, and that's going to return true or false. Does the object passed here, 21, is it an integer or not? And so let's print this just to see what the outcome is. And I'll go run this, and here we can see it's true. Now notice if I change that to a string, and I save, and I run this down below, we get false. And this might be important because when you're taking user input, you're not always going to know, uh, especially if you're asking for what is their age and they give you some kind of string, you can say right off the bat, is this an instance of an integer? Because we're looking for their age. If they give you the string, yes, <laughs> that's not going to be an age. And you can just rule that out and throw an error at the user. And just to show you string, um, you know, once you've seen it once, you've probably seen it all, but let's just put yes, and we'll save and run this, and notice down here, it came back as true because yes here is a string. If it's a tuple, let's pass in a tuple, so we can have 21, I guess, and yes in this tuple. And then the type, we're going to ask, is the first parameter going to be a tuple? I'm going to clear this down here and run it. And that comes out as true because this is a tuple dictionary, as you'd expect. Let's do one and a value of test. And this is going to be dict, not tuple. We'll run this. Now we get true. You can pass in multiple things in here. So if we wanted to, inside of parentheses, I can put int, I can put uh, tuple, I can put string. And if it meets one of these in this group here, it will come back as true. But in our case, we didn't put dictionary in this group, and so it came back false, or tuple, I guess. So let's put dictionary in this tuple, and now we get true. Okay, so lastly, I wanna show you something that's kind of related to what we talked about in the last couple of videos. We talked about classes a few videos back, and this is actually going to continue on in the next video where I use this to show you how you can use this for multiple constructors in your class. That's the whole reason I'm really talking about this, or I guess what brought this to mind. But let's say we have a class, dog, and I'm just gonna give it one property, x, which is gonna equal one, because this is just for uh, demonstration. Now let's say d here is going to be equal to a new dog object, and then we can say, t is instance is object d so remember object d is an object of the class dog we can say is that an object of dog and now if we print this out and we run this we get true <clears throat> because d is an object of class dog and we asked it, is D an object of dog? And it wrote back, yes. So you can ask it, is this object an instance of this particular class? And it can write back true or false if it is. Okay, so that's the is instance function. That's how you can use it. Those are the different uh, 
things you can do with this function. Hopefully you find it useful in the future. Maybe it'll come across. And you'll be like, oh, I can use the ins instance in order to solve this issue. So thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next video when we talk about how to have multiple constructors in a Python class. And yeah, take care.